everyone and welcome back to another Let's Create Game Mechanics in Unreal Engine 4. In this video I recreate the Magnesis Rune from Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is a power which allows you to detect and then pick up from a distance any magnetic object within a certain radius and generally this is used for puzzles and other various interactions inside of the Zelda game. This is going to be the third in the series of Zelda mechanics as I work my way back through all of the runes from the Breath of the Wild game. The main things I needed to focus on whilst recreating this were to create some visual distinctions for the Magnesis objects as this time the visuals are actually kind of part of the mechanic. Then to implement the physics system to allow objects to be grabbed and moved around and then finally finishing off the mechanic with some purely visual effects as well. So for this mechanic I was able to begin testing my rune selection system by implementing the second rune power and thankfully this worked straight away and due to the future planning that I had taken with the previous mechanic it's proven to be incredibly simple to activate the placeholder buttons I have, reuse the interface systems and simply pass in the type of rune that is being selected. This means that the next thing I was able to focus on were the visual parts of the Magnesis mechanic. In Breath of the Wild, when you activate the rune, uh, any magnetic object nearby is highlighted in pink to indicate it can be selected or grabbed. And then when you grab the object, the Magnesis power will turn the object that you've grabbed to be highlighted in yellow. I've done this using a simple find all objects function, grabbing the mesh component and changing the material instance it's using. And doing this first has been a great way to visualize the mechanics and avoid a lot of the debugging stage and move straight on to the implementation. With the visual side of the mechanics set up and ready to go, I created the base Magnesis pickup object and a few child class variants just for visual purposes. I then started working on the new Magnesis Rune component class and it was at this stage that I realized that in the past I'd overlooked the fact that most, uh, if not all of the Rune component classes would be reusing some of the same logic, such as getting the owning player, activating and deactivating the Rune and the basic Rune use function. So before going any further with the Magnesis logic, I went back and broke the shared logic into a Rune component base class. Uh, this required some reworking of the functionality to ensure that there would be no bugs due to things like missing references. But with that done, I was able to very quickly get the Magnesis rune working with the basic functionality to communicate with the player using the parent class function. So this was a great thing to realize and improve now as it means that this should speed up the remaining rune components when implementing those. Uh, and I've made mention of this in the video as it was kind of an aside to creating the Magnesis component specifically, but for any of you who will be downloading this and testing the project out, do make sure to check out the new class hierarchy and specifically the rune component base class. Uh, with that done though, I was able to test the materials that I'd prepared to toggle in and out of the Magnesis to see the objects being highlighted. And then to handle the physics side of the mechanic, I researched into examples of similar projects that have been created by other developers. And the standard approach seems to be to use the physics handle inside of the player class and then attaching the object to be grabbed to the physics handle. Uh, this proved to replicate the Breath of the Wild mechanic really well. So I've taken the same approach in this project. And whilst implementing the line trace logic in the new component, I realized I'd actually forgotten in the previous video to mention a custom blueprint function library that I'd set up. And this has been created purely to allow me to grab details from the player camera, trace to a specific point in the world uh, and use that as the line trace. And I'd forgotten to make use of this in the new component. So I was actually duplicating code again. So I quickly swapped my rewritten logic in the Magnesis component out for that in the Blueprint function library and was able to fully test the working implementation. So this is another thing just to uh, to really mention that if you wanted to look at the some of the classes that I may have forgotten to mention in the past, do check out the Blueprint function library and see how that's working too. So with the logic implemented for all of the stages of the Magnesis process, entering Magnesis, highlighting the objects that can be grabbed and grabbing the objects, I discovered that I'd overlooked resetting the rune components when swapping runes in the menu. Uh, this actually meant that I could still create cryonis pillars when changing to the magnesis power and vice versa. So I spent a little bit more time again fixing this and this proved to be one of the drawbacks of making one large project rather than a mechanic specific project. But it's proven to be a great way to make me consider multiple components and mechanics all working alongside each other and accounting for that in the code. 
So after fixing the more important project breaking bugs, I returned to the final stages of the magnesis rune logic and implemented the push pull functions. This was again made really simple by adding a couple of extra function calls to the existing interface, creating the input mapping in the project settings. For this I've used the mouse scroll up and down and then calling the movement logic from the player class to the component when the input binding is triggered. And then to wrap up this mechanic, I spent a little bit of time trying out different combinations of the physics handle default values to get a smoother and more kind of floaty feel when moving the magnesis objects, similar to that in Breath of the Wild. The built-in physics handle component actually turned out to be great for this as it has a lot of the parameters exposed that you'd need to modify and tweak the feeling of moving an object when held such as smoothing and dampening the forces that you're applying to the object when it's being moved. And then finally, I created a beam particle emitter to join from the player to the held object. And this was purely a cosmetic feature to finish the room mechanic, as it's quite a big visual aspect when using the power in Breath of the Wild, so I kind of felt it would be a shame to overlook that. So this is the final result, and I really liked the addition of the beam emitter on this one. I also had a lot of fun just playing around with the physics mechanics, trying to launch objects and myself around the map. It highlighted some really emergent gameplay from such a simple mechanic, which is definitely part of what I think makes Breath of the Wild such a great game. Uh, it's definitely something I remember doing in, in that game, is just throwing things around, finding out that you could do the magnesis on things like weapons to finish puzzles as well. I think this, in such a sort of simplified form, really highlights how emergent gameplay can come from some very basic mechanics. And interestingly as well, this is one of the easiest and quickest mechanics to implement so far, uh, but the entire process actually took me the longest because I had so many systems that I thought I'd planned for ahead of time, uh, which needed adjusting and fixing to avoid the bugs like I've mentioned. So fingers crossed going forward that this is going to actually speed up the implementation of the future Zelda mechanics now that they're done. The source code to this project will now be updated and released again to absolutely everyone for free. So do check out the download link for that again in the description if you wanted to check out or just get your hands on the mechanics as we go through this series. And of course, if you do try it, then do leave a comment, let me know what you think, and feel free to share any of the projects that you might make using some of the mechanics from the demo. And to help allow me to keep creating more projects like this, do consider showing your support over on Patreon. Again, link for that is in the description below. Even a $1 donation helps, is greatly appreciated, and you gain access to the Patreon exclusive Discord, as well as early updates on what's happening on the channel. Okay, so I hope you all enjoy playing around in the Zelda demo. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That is greatly appreciated. And of course, do consider subscribing if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time. Thank you.